for us to be the only band that did not have to endure that experience um we felt um I guess guilty is just the most elegant way of putting it. It was there was uh, a pretty profound sense of guilt. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Kyle of vitriol thank you so much the man with a voice made for radio um how are you doing uh i'm doing real well thank you there you go there how about you yourself go. i am doing well i'm doing well i'm excited for this conversation i'm excited for this album coming out uh now before we get started on the the album coming out soon and it is coming soon as we are talking first um let's uh let's quickly touch on that flying school bus that can do everything have you guys eaten those apples yet yeah that thing man her name is francis rest in peace uh you know she broke down we did the uh that bus invaders episode right that we got a lot of great feedback You're like oh man that's such a cool rig that's such a great idea and <laughs> literally the next tour <laughs> one show in and the thing just the engine bl just blows you know it's done like it was that thing was cooked and we coasted it basically managed by a miracle managed to coast that thing over the canadian border back into the states um got it towed to a mechanic and that's when they told us like uh you know that's the even yeah, yeah it's the end of francis even if you can get a new heart in her or the transmission yeah, yeah, yeah. got so hot it's it's likely it fused up so yeah it was a hard it was a big l it was a big i'm still kind of recovering from that uh emotional we loved that thing we hand painted that fucking thing you know uh it's a drag we still don't have a replacement but we'll see so I, we we met briefly before when you were on the road with uh, with Morbid Angel and Crypta, and that was obviously a very very um, uh, interesting tour. Uh, you guys joined that tour days after all hell broke loose, um, and a venue came down. Fortunately, a fan you know passed away in, in that uh, tornado hitting the venue. Um, you know, when when I briefly met you, that was obviously after that because you had already joined the tour. Um, that whole the whole crew. Of all the bands involved, Revocation was on a tour as well. Everybody was still at that time very much in shock. Like you could tell that there was a. It's not your average vibe for a, for a, for a death metal you know package tour having a party. What was that like for you guys? Because I've had obviously in depth conversation with the other bands uh, at that time um, who lived through that. But for you guys joining that tour after that happened, like how do you? go into that like 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 did you guys have a conversation about that um like like what what that must have been the weirdest experience for you guys joining a package it was very very strange um and very difficult for us we had i guess something that i imagine could be likened to survivor's guilt right you know there was there was an element because it's anyone who's been in a touring environment knows how much camaraderie is right. is the foundation of that experience that you're all in this in the shit together you're all sucking the suck together you know right. so for us to be the only band that did not have to endure that experience um we felt um I guess guilty is just the most elegant way of putting it. It was there was a, a pretty profound sense of guilt um, right. that we weren't there for that, uh, and that our good friends or close friends in skeletal remains, who we did, uh, had already done a tour with in the past, right. um, Pierce, their drummer, uh, filled in on a tour for us. Like we, he's traveled in our van before, um, so it wasn't just 
the tour package it was friends you know right. like Pierce lives fucking five minutes away from me you know like literally he lives yeah. in it so and they were the band that was on the stage right before the shit hit the fan yeah so you know and the fact that crypta's bus was annihilated without any of them in there was absolute miracle because they spent so much time in there oh yeah yeah like luana i think just you know minutes before was still in that right yeah something like that it was yeah. so it was horrific um so we couldn't relate you know there was a way in which you 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 want to be able to commiserate you want to be able to share in that and you can't there's just no way to access that so we kind of felt like the privileged uh you know i don't know i, I haven't really had to articulate it yet yeah, you yeah, know yeah. verbalize it but thanks for asking the question but yeah it was uh that that was tough and then seeing people that we care about you know without naming names uh you know not you know spilling on street laundry but you right. know some there, there are a couple people that came home from that tour um not sure if they're going to be ready to go back out right soon you know what i mean yeah. like that was that really some people really took that home i i was shocked that frankly I, there was a big part of me that was shocked the tour was even continuing right um, after that uh props to everyone on that fucking tour that no one was like dude i'm going home after that yeah, like yeah, yeah for sure and the crypto girls man what soldiers dude um, yeah. but but yeah it was a trip i mean that's that's probably as much as i can say about that experience a lot of the emotions you just talk about you know like feeling of not really knowing where to belong not really understanding how to deal with something or how to react feeling um you know a sense of guilt and maybe a level of, of feeling like an imposter in a way those are all elements that here's my fourth segue if you look at the new album they're definitely there you know those themes uh there there seems to be and maybe i'm projecting maybe you tell me if i'm right or wrong but you know those those feelings of from self-doubt to self-loathing are very much present on that album uh is am i on to something here oh absolutely yeah 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 absolutely um but in in a way that's and this is what's always important about for me the voice of vitriol is that uh um it's a cultivating destruction you know it's a, it's for for me it's always about destroying what deserves to be destroyed loathing what deserves to be loathed which i think there's plenty right. within all of us um and engaging in that painful self excavation you know excavation um of these there's a re like put it this way there's a reason the cover art is a figure full of snakes you right know what i mean there's this i like to say that the contrast between the first album and this album is to bathe was an album full of answers suffer is an album full of questions right you know like it, to bathe was very arrogant in a way that it needed to be like and i i don't mean that in like a naive or missed way. way it yeah. was just in a in the spirit of survival you know what i mean the, the first album is really about that vicious explosive indignant place that people have to go to to liberate themselves out of really um destructive environments yeah, 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 yeah. but then something happens when you succeed if you manage to su succeed and you're anger and your indignation and all of those things do th their job and carry you out of it you hopefully find yourself in a place where you can access a little bit of rest and reflection mm -hmm. and that's when all that self-doubt can start pouring in and that's when you can start attacking these parts of yourself that you couldn't because you would die if you did like in a, in a previous environment so I wanted this to be, especially in the wake of the first album, the most the most potent the most potent aspect of that experience of the first album for me 
was the connection I made with the fans on with songs like Victim and I Drown Nightly. These were the more personal songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really inspired me to go more all in in that direction on this album. Yeah. So I wanted to be with as much of a reputation as Vitriol got for being this very uh, kind of hard-nosed, finger-pointing kind of band. Um, I think it was missed on some people, not everyone, but some people, it was lost on some people that that finger was like, when I wrote Victim, that song was as much about me as it was about the rest of the world. Right. Um, so I wanted to make that more clear with this album to to be more vulnerable in a way that uh without softening you know because it's definitely not a it's 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 still really all about radical personal responsibility opening up in this way and and you know, not just writing, but performing over and over again. And because let's just all agree that this is album. This album is gonna do well. This is gonna be um, an album that your fans are gonna want to hear often. When you that catharsis of writing that and talking about it is that always catharsis, or is this now also on a personal level challenging to bring over and over again? Uh, and it's a question I've asked multiple people that write deeply personal things, and I get very different responses. There are people that say like. I put my soul in in, in in a song and I want to get rid of it now. Um, yeah. And I don't want to play it live because it brings back the stuff. And other yeah. people go like, no, no, no. Like it's actually every time I, I sing it, it's a little better. Like wh- where, yeah. where do you fall on that spectrum? What an excellent question. That is um, what a cool question. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to answer that. Um, it's, it's song to song. And that, I've been making extreme metal for a long time, but it wasn't until the first album that I got to tour as consistently um, or at all performing songs that were so close. Right. You know, I'm performing them vocally. So what I learned is that, especially if you're the kind of person where you're, you are trying to make music that is very personal to yourself. Um, you're doing a lot more when you when you write an album you're doing a lot more than m- making a bunch of songs you're going to play over and over again right. you're creating a world that you're going to live in you know like you're really building your environment for the next three four years however long it's going to take right but the next um and i didn't appreciate how much that would affect me and that first album was a hard place to live in okay. um because a lot of it was, I refer to that album as like dark catharsis, right. because it's it is kind of what you described in the former uh, um, example of this 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 almost this exorcism, right? You know, yeah. uh, and trying to go back and eat the eat the regurgitation over and over again. It's kind of like you know eating your own vomit, um, and that some of those songs are hard. Right. Uh, to be to do to go to and and be there all the time, so I was really conscientious about that. Moving into this next album, I said, I need to create a better world for me to live in. You know, I I want to create something that's more um, more cultivating and less just outwardly destructive. Like, there are songs that I do feel like I connect with almost more and more as time goes on, and those are the more personal ones, like I Drown Nightly, um, uh, Victim, even songs like The Parting of a Neck that I wrote. I wrote those lyrics when I was quite young, very young. Yeah. And and they were really abstract. Um, I was experimenting a lot with like automated writing and uh, back then where I was just like more freeform writing. And those songs are really interesting because there's something about an older self interpreting the lyrics of your younger self that you almost, you get things 
you understand why you did something in a way that you didn't before. So The Parting of a Neck is one of those songs where the lyrical content has revealed itself to me over time. Mm -hmm. And that's been such a cool experience um, that, that I still connect a lot with that song. You already mentioned the cover art, and obviously it looks really cool. But what it's also, it's so interesting in so many different ways because your cover art is such a statement that you're doing things different, that you, that you, that you know, you, you're bending rules. You've got, basically, you're looking from behind. You don't even see the expression. Um, on, I know there's more to the artwork that will, that is going to be revealed for people that get, you know, the album and, and see it in its full glory and all that kind of good stuff. But um, uh, just, it's, it's such a different approach compared to most cover art we see. It's also way more colorful than we often see from... I know, and it, it sounds like a silly thing, but it's not because it shows you that you don't, you know, you're doing different things a little different. I think you said in an older interview that when you started, you really wanted to be a reaction to what at the time was getting, you know, was all the buzz, was all the, the very like genty and technical death metal stuff, and you wanted something more straightforward. And interestingly enough, that has also sort of evolved to, I'm not going to call you a genty or a proggy death metal band. But it would be unfair to say that you're not a technical death metal band at the same time. Um, that evolution, like, do you take time? You said just now, like, oh, you know, it's interesting to go back to what you wrote earlier and see it from a different way. Like, from, let's forget about the lyrics and the themes, but purely the musical uh, approach to Vitriol. Like, are you sometimes, like, surprised yourself to see, like, like, holy shit, what, are, what a journey that's been? Yeah, in ways, certainly. Like, the, the thing that I was most surprised by with this new album was the amount of melody uh, right. that it was that I was embracing in these songs. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, that's never something I never heard in the theater of my mind. I never heard that kind of melody playing a role in the landscape of our sound. Right. Um, but I put a, a very high value in if an instinct and my instinctually i just kept going there um and what that revealed to me over time was that was my way of trying of seeking dynamic and contrast because right. i wanted this album to be much more dynamic than the previous album vitriol's goal was never to not be to, not to avoid technicality but to not use technicality as our north star right you know we, we treat technicality as a means to an end rather than a goal yeah. whereas to me definitionally tech death bands use technicality as the the metric um so i'm not surprised by how technical the band has become but i was surprised by how uh pretty <laughs> the band has kind of become uh on this album yeah. you know and, and that was kind of the going from the first album to the second album. I, I talk about the, the sound on the first one as being like sonic waterboarding, you know, just very relentless. Yeah. Constant pressure. And I wanted to take the same amount of energy, but crack it open and make it, you know, spread that shit out when it's, when we're fast, we're faster. When we're slow, we're slower. Um, big, tall mountains, big, deep valleys, you know? So, uh, that that yeah i was definitely that surprises me and i hope i hope i continue to surprise myself it's a it's a good album man and um you're gonna what's really exciting is that we're living through this you know golden age for death metal and a lot of old school inspired death metal we see some of the old guys put out amazing album see a lot of newer bands do cool stuff you're going on the road with what likely will be the, the best death metal package of the year right you know with, with cattle and and carn effects both in their very unique styles had really cool albums last year as well i think the cattle album was my favorite death metal album of the year um that's going to be quite that was it the chaos and carnage tour i think it's called and that is going to be pretty epic um you're going to be promoting this album uh, for everybody watching this, to, to wrap us up a bit, because we're running out of time, um, 
what uh, what can we keep our eyes open for in 2024 when it comes to vitriol? So that, and hopefully we'll be making it to to Europe before the before the year's over. That's the hope. But beyond that, just expect us to be shoving this album down your throat because we think it's real good. There you go. There you go. Awesome, Kyle. Thank you so much for you know opening the door a little bit and sharing you know more than just about uh, the music. I really appreciate your openness and honesty in this conversation. I am. I mean, I, I think it's clear by now. And I guess I just be clear i don't tell every band i interview that they've got a really cool album uh, the, the the watchers of the show know that uh, i'm truly excited for the fans to get to listen to the whole thing thank you so much for your car uh, for your time today i really appreciate it and i wish you all the best with this release man thank you very much ben i appreciate the opportunity and thanks for being patient with my long-winded answers <laughs> You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.